Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil handy and any type of ink that you would like to use, but make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. All right, the first thing you're going to do is we're going to use our number two pencil to get our proportions, to do our, our uh, composition, to figure out where everything goes. When you're doing humans, you start out with stick figures. And so that's kind of what we want to do, just to determine where this thing is going to go. So I'm going to start out with a little oval for the head. There's a little oval. Remember, we're drawing on the side of our pencil so that we can erase it. Everything here gets erased. And it's not really, a, I'm not really going to do a stick figure because that's too simplistic. But I am going to do very simple shapes. Here's her shoulders. Her upper torso is just this kind of triangular shape. Arms, you can do stick figures for the arms, I guess. If you know a little bit about proportioning, uh, the size of the head, if you kind of measure from the size of the head, you can kind of figure out where everything's going to go with the, the size of the head. In other words, if you take the size of the head and you go from the shoulder to the elbow, that's about the same size there. And then from the elbow to the wrist, about the same size. So you can kind of figure that out. You can just kind of make a little mark there. There's the elbow, elbow to the wrist. And then from the wrist on, there's... There's the hand, and the hand you just kind of block in. I'm going to put in the gun as just a little rectangle. Just to remind myself that that's where it is. There's the hip, and the hip is kind of like the shoulder in that it just goes kind of this obelisk shape. And then, also, something you may not know uh, about balance and human figures, right below the neck, where the clavicle, those two little bones on your, your, on your neck, their clavicles, called, but where they meet is there's this little divot right there, and that's the center of your body. Whenever you have a load-bearing leg like she has, that's going to be directly under that little divot. So if I come straight down here like this, and just right below that little divot, make a little mark there. That's where that load-bearing leg is going to go. So I can start from here and go with my line to that load-bearing leg. That's where it's going to go. Then the other one kind of comes out halfway through. There's your leg. So it is kind of a glorified stick figure kind of feel to it. Your wrist, if you, if you think about where your hip is, your wrist is about straight out from your hip. There's your other gun. Normally when we do proportioning of the human form, uh, in a superhero like this, we're about 8 to 10 heads tall. In reality, she's probably only about 7 heads tall. But superheroes are always expanded. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that, I'm going to put a little bit of thickness to it. Thick and thin. And if you wanted to, you could block the hair in as just a shape. This is how far out it goes. Don't think of it like spaghetti. Your knee, there's a little bone on your knee called a patella. That's your knee bone. 
And uh, wherever your foot is facing, that, that patella kind of faces with it. So it's really hard to turn your feet out and not have your patella kind of turn out with it. So just a thought. If you're riding horses or anything like that, you kind of look at that direction that patella is facing. Like I say, if you wanted to add something in the background, you're more than welcome to. I mean, we could just do little clouds. We could do a little shadow. You know, we need something back in there, but it's up to you what you put in there. What is most important here are probably faces and hands. And, and I, I would dare say that most of my students, that's the thing they fear. They're like, oh, please don't make me do faces and hands. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it, and we're going to... We're going to take it step by step, and it's going to be fairly easy. Okay? So what we first have to do is I'm going to zoom into her head just so we can see what's going on a little easier. Okay, first of all, we are looking up into her, her face. And if you notice, like, where, where her eyes are and things like that, you can just do kind of a little arch there. Just say that's kind of where the eyes go. The nose is going to be right below it. In fact, the tip of her nose almost lines up with, with her eyes. So you could just kind of do this little shadow there just to say that's it's the tip of the nose. kind of comes up into there. And then her lips are very curved. Everything's going to curve because you're looking up into the head. And the head is round. It's never level. It's always round. So look at her eyebrows. They're curved. You can start from the side here and kind of go up and around and curve there. And then the chin, we're looking up into the chin too. And, and instead of trying to draw a line around the chin, we're just going to do this shadow. And it's almost triangular. I mean, there's it's like thicker on the one side than it is on the other. And I'm going to draw down the thorax. So all we've done is mark it out. And if you're a little um, shy about doing eyes and stuff, you may want to draw those in. What you may want to do is just take your eraser and draw things in with your eraser. In other words, all I'm doing is getting rid of some of the edge around it. And it's, it's going to end up looking kind of like eyes and nose and mouth, even though I didn't do eyes and nose and mouth. I just did little shapes. Uh, because this is fairly small, we're just going to use a lot of dashes and dots. So the first thing I'm going to do is I always start with the eye. But you can start wherever you want to. So I'm going to start with this curve across the eye. I'm just going to do this little, little curve, very nice and soft. And the top eyelid is usually darker because you've got eyelashes and things like that. We're looking up into the eye, so the bottom eyelid is going to be either straight or maybe slightly uh, upcurved. So maybe a couple of dots and dashes. A little dot there. Here's her, her iris. A little, little bracket there and a little bracket here. There's the iris. And then right in the middle is her pupil. And there's a shine across it. So you just do that little C shape. Leave out that little spot of light. And that's it. That eye is done. What about the bottom lid? Well, you, you don't really need one there. If, if there is a little shadow, we could do a little shadow. But for right now, that's it. Same thing with this other eye. Just a little arch. A little bracket. Bracket. A little C-shape for her pupil. That touches the top eyelid. And you got it. Now, if you need anything in the bottom, just a, a little dash or a little dot, sometimes that's all you need. A couple little dots maybe there, a couple little dots along here.
Now, the one thing that people do is they'll want to draw a line around the nose. Don't do that. Instead, you want to do just the shapes of the nostrils, which I'm just going to come in and just draw little dots and dashes in the shape of a nostril. And on the other side, little dots and dashes. I'm barely touching the paper. And then on the this nostril over here, maybe a dot or a dash. And this nostril over here is a little bit more. It's a little more in shadow. And then down the side of the nose, you just put little hash lines like this. Hatch, 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 hatch. And you can do dots and dashes, whatever you feel like you need. The top eyelid, just a couple little dots and dashes. This one over here, same thing. There's your eyelid. And then your, your, those little feathered lines, dots and dashes. Now, we could come back into this if we need to. My, my mouth was a little low, so I'm going to make that adjustment. I'm going to come up. In the corners of the mouth, some dots and dashes in the corner of the mouth. And if you're going to do, if you want the lips to kind of show through, little hatched lines or dots. Let me just do these little hatched lines, maybe a couple little dots. But some of that you could just leave out. Bottom lip, hatched lines and dots. Like I say, we can always come back in and add more if we need to. Underneath her jaw, you can just do these little hatched lines. And again, in that little triangular shape. I've had to adjust mine, so I've got to go up a little bit higher. Higher than I had. I'm just going to do these little hatched lines. Go up the jaw. Her neck, where her thorax is, I might want to hatch through that. And just a couple little dots and dashes, and that's it. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff with my needed eraser, just, just because sometimes all that pencil gets in the way. Mostly it. We can always come back in later on. Now for the second uh, scary part, the hair. You look at your hair, pick out the darkest areas in the hair. So right around the, the side of the face, um, maybe just around this area up in here where it comes off the head, uh, maybe this coming out there. And you just think, okay, I can see the direction that hair flows. If my line comes and flows that way as I go through it, it's going to end up kind of looking like hair. And I'm just going to do the darkest areas first. And then just keep going until it's as dark or light as I want it to be.
couple little lines in between, and you got it. Piece of cake. And just let the hair take care of itself. Where it's really light, you want to maybe just leave it out. So like this edge over here, you can just leave it out completely. Get rid of my graphite so you can see it better. Piece of cake. If it's really light, just leave it out. Here's some that kind of comes down over her face. I'm just going to bring some of that down. Very light. If there's a shadow, which there is right here, I'm going to use little hatched lines. And then I'm going to pick out the darkest areas and start there. And just hatch through it in the direction the hair flows. Do some short ones, some long ones. And if there's some little hairs that are kind of flowing up, you can even have them just kind of hanging up there off the side, very light and thin, like that, and just not even attached to anything. And everybody understands that's, that's hair flowing around. I'm going to crosshatch through some of this shadow under her chin because it's pretty dark. And if there's anything else you need, you could just do little dots or dashes. And that's basically it. I'm going to add a little bit of line above this eye, just here, because it's a little darker right there. And maybe a little over here. And that's the scariest part. It's pretty well done. I always breathe a sigh of relief when I get the head done. Because it's like, okay, everything else is going to be just fine. If I can do the head, everything else will be just fine. I'm going to keep working on the hair. Just any of the really dark areas. Some flow up, some flow down. And you can just leave some hanging off to the side there. Nobody's 
keeping track of where that hair is. If you wanted that face over here to be, there's a little bit of shadow right there, and you want that shadow in there, you can just hatch through it very, very lightly. We can always come back into it, too, and add more. So here's the edge of her jacket. It comes down the front. There's a kind of a tall collar there. You can do a zipper if you want, just little little dots and dashes. So I can see that little zipper. It's not a it's not a straight line that you want there. And then the rest of it is just shapes of dark and light you can hatch through it so her outfits kind of dark any kind you have um, folds you can just kind of pick out the folds you can draw them first with your pencil if you want to so like if I had a fold right here and I just went in I could draw this first with my pencil then I can go into it and just kind of hatch through it or you can just hatch through it to begin with we're going to have to be doing a bunch of little cross hatching because this is pretty dark. We wanted to go into this maybe several times, but there's a ton that you could leave out. All the edge of the shoulder, the edge of her torso, here, her hip, you just leave out. So here it is left out. I can come down in, I can put in a little shadow right there. And then that just, you just leave it out. Get rid of that. And everybody knows where that's at. You don't have to draw it in. Anytime you're going to do folds in fabric, just pick out the shape of the folds and hatch them in. So I just, here's the shape of the folds. You just hatch them in. Some are darker than others. So you have to go over it a couple of times, maybe. And then you just scribble it in. I, technically, you can you can do just about whatever you want to as far as scribbling goes. Any little dark edges. I think that little buckle is probably important, so I'm going to throw that in. I don't, can't really see a lot of detail there, but throw that in like that. When you're cross hatching, you can uh, you can just turn your paper if you want to. I have a hard time turning my paper because it doesn't stain your window. So I just turn my hand, figure out which direction I want it to go, and then just slide my hand around.
I don't know if you're anything like me. When I first start ink, it frustrates me a little bit because I can't get all the details I want. But I think if you just draw your darks and lights, the details come through. That all of a sudden you're like, oh, I drew the details and I didn't even know I was drawing the details. I'm not really sure what these things are around her wrist. I'm sure they're something important. But for her hands, because she's got gloves on, because all you see really are the fingertips, that's all you have to do is do the fingertips. So I'm just going to start with the glove. These little dots and dashes, there's the glove. Here's that little dark shape inside the glove. And then there's a thumb tip right there. You just do a little thumb tip. Don't worry about like the thumbnail or anything. If you if you think you you need to have it, with it which you can see it, just do a couple little dots and dashes. And the thumbnail will come through. I mean, it it almost looks that way already. You just just ignore it. Can't hardly see the end of the gun, so I'm not even gonna draw it in. Finger, there's another finger, there's another finger, there's a tip, the finger there, tip of a finger there. And technically, that's all you need. And you can always come back in and add more later if you need to.
Oh, there's a lot of black in here. If you don't have room at the bottom, you can always vignette it. In other words, as it comes down, you kind of fade it out, you, you just less and less and less and less until it finally disappears. You don't want to end at a joint though. So like at the knee, you don't want to end it there. You want to you want to at least bring it down a little bit or go above it. It, joints are a little uncomfortable to end things on. So I'm just going to leave her legs kind of vignetted out because my I'm kind of running out of space there a little bit. And I'm going to just do a little bit of something in the background. I have no idea what this is. But something to just say, she's on the ground. She's not floating. If you wanted to do some of that kind of starship, spaceship looking thing in the background, you definitely could. The last thing you do when you're to that point is you just kind of start finding some areas that you need to do a little darker. Just go back into them, hatch through them, whatever, whatever you feel like you need to do. I'm going to get rid of all the graphite I've got. This is the funnest part. Get rid of all that graphite. It makes it kind of dirty. You get rid of your graphite and it just cleans it up. The lights come lighter.
Like I say, you can carry this on as far as you want it to go. That's about it for me. Good place for a signature. Uh, somewhere about down in there, maybe down just below or by her ankle there somewhere. It's kind of up to you where you put it. Let's throw mine right there. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully somewhere along the way it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better.